a lot of observation and it's 8.40 in the morning, so it's super busy. We're in another, we're in a, a, a chuck situation here. Two lanes, oncoming traffic both ways. Oh, look, no way. Did it know that biker was coming? Well, you just go, you're behaving weird. You're not behaving natural like. And when the car starts to behave more natural. Okay, it's been a while since I've talked about full self-driving. I actually was one of the first three to get full self-driving beta almost like three, God, it's been a while. But a lot has changed from then. I made a bunch of videos back then and not a lot was changing or evolving in full self-driving. It was getting incrementally better but it still wasn't perfect. That's up until now. Um, now has been the biggest shift in full self-driving. Um, it is now moved to a single stack. They've removed thousands of lines of code and they are now offering full self-driving to everyone that has a car that qualifies 30 days free and everyone gets it instead of it being this select group like it was before. So with full self-driving beta, or now, it's not even called beta, it's full self-driving supervised version 12.3.3. .3. I got it on my car and I thought, hey, let's do a test. Let's just see how good the latest version, the version that's getting offered to everyone to try is. Can I have a zero intervention drive? How natural does it feel? And I thought I'd share that with you guys. So I'm gonna go on a drive right now from right around near my house to my work. And let's just see how good version 12.3.3 full self-driving supervised performs and is it ready for the masses? Let's try it out. You can see here, I've got it here. It's upgraded the city streets driving stack to a single stack. So that means, you know, city streets and highway end to end neural network trained on millions of video clips. Um, and so a lot of, you know, extra code has been eliminated. Um, and a lot of the feedback has been how natural this has been. So I want to take you guys for a drive and just observe what things have been changed and what things um, could be better. So let's get started on drive. Let me get into place before we begin. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done here is navigate a 20 mile, 38 minute route. Um, I chose Taco Bell in another city. Um, so you can see here, there are some city street driving here up until the freeway. There's traffic. I'm going to have to get onto the carpool lane. Um, that is going to go for quite a while here. And then we're going to exit. And this is all local road up until that Taco Bell that's over in Sunnyvale. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here um, and see how it goes. I'm in uh, drive right now, but you can see um, full self-driving is ready to go. Um, I will let you guys know if I press the accelerator or I do anything, anytime I touch the wheel, you'll be able to notice here that if it's blue here, I'm not touching the steering wheel. Um, and I'll let you know if I hit accelerator or if I hit brake um, and we'll we'll go. Let, let's, let's get started. So let me talk you through kind of everything here. This is, um, I was just in a neighborhood. Um, so we're pulling out. Now this first one here, this is, uh, um, props to you, Chuck. Chuck does a unprotected left turn. Um, this is a going to be crossing two lanes uh, in either direction coming. So it's got to have good visibility of kind of both ways. There's two lanes coming this way, two lanes going this way. So a lot of observation and it's 840 in the morning. So it's super busy. Now there's cars coming from the left, uh, cars coming from the right right now. So it's going to have to do it. Um, we'll see here how it does. Previously, I would always do this on my own. And that was mainly because I'm a little bit more aggressive than uh, previous versions of FSD would do. Um, okay, we're free on both. And look, it just goes. We're completely free. There was no cars even coming somewhat close. So that was that was really good. I have not touched the accelerator. It's just kind of floating there on my foot. Um, we're going through a school zone right now. Um, one thing I wanted to call out that I really like in this version, um, touch the steering wheel here, is under autopilot, this uh, setting for automatic set speed offset. And I think, um, looking at the screen, so of course it's getting mad at me. Um, and that is important because it has the car behave more natural like. Now, we're in another, we're in a, a, a chuck situation here two lanes, oncoming traffic both ways, and we need to make a left. 
it has never been able to do this on its own because of how much traffic there is. I typically usually always do this. I'm gonna give it a chance. There's an open window coming, actually, nope, now cars are coming from the left. And it's creeping out almost to a point of I feeling uncomfortable, but let's see. We're about to get a huge window. Oh, nope, car's coming, so it slows down. Now, we're free, we're open on the left. On the right, we're open, but there is a car coming. And it does it. And the car is about maybe three cars behind me. Um, and it did it. Let me go ahead and touch the steering wheel. It's changing lanes. Completely natural. Now, what I wanted to point out is, you'll see here, 35 mile per hour limit zone. I have my driving set to assertive. And we are now coasting at 39 miles per hour. If I change my, my driving type, um, it will be a little bit more conservative on speed, but because I've set that offset, it acts more natural, which I think is really good because you've got these roads that all of a sudden, the uh, it'll go from like 40 miles an hour down to like 30 miles an hour. Um, and when we're driving naturally, we are not aware of that. And so uh, we tend to just kind of drive more natural. But with previous version of full self-driving, it followed that speed limit accurately and that would cause this almost phantom break when really it's just matching the speed now we've got an opening we can go there's space we can actually get in there and the line is dotted so we can get into the right turn lane it's choosing not to go yet um i would go um it is not so let me just move this over i'll show you here this is exactly how we're looking it's got the space it can go there is a biker coming right now but there wasn't for this whole entire time. Oh, look, no way. Did it know that biker was coming? Maybe the biker helped to it to identify that it can go now. Whatever it did, it did exactly what I thought it would do. And now there's a biker here. You can see him right there. Okay, I don't know what that's doing, but he's there. Um, that's incredible. We are in a turning lane. This was one of my biggest, biggest complaints for full self-driving for a while was getting into the turning lane to make a turn. It's legal here in California. Um, I know it's not like that everywhere else, but like I think it's like 300 or 500 feet you can get into that turning lane. Um, so far, I've done nothing but you know keep my hand on the steering wheel, keep looking forward, and uh, it's, it's behaving very natural, which is what I like. I think the biggest thing that most full self-driving testers will tell you is the unnatural behavior, which actually causes you to press the accelerator because you don't want those around you getting pissed, right? Like you're acting weird or the car is like jittery or paused or something like that. And they're like, well, you just go, you're behaving weird, you're not behaving natural like. And when the car starts to behave more natural, that's when this becomes a feature that's more usable uh, is what I think. So, so far, we're good. Okay, just got back, drive is done. Wanted to summarize what we experienced. Uh, number one is I'm pretty convinced that with this version of FSD, we can actually remove the nag. You saw in the video that the camera was very well um, aware of what I was doing and where I was staring, um, whether I looked at my phone within like I would say 30 seconds, it warned me to look forward. So it doesn't really need the nag. I think the nag uh, will help. I mean, if we remove the nag, it will help further FSD and make it even better of an experience. But I think we're there. We saw zero intervention drive that included local roads, freeway. Now, granted, this is not the perfect use case. There are many different use cases and I'm sure it doesn't operate perfectly everywhere, um, but in my experience of having FSD for, for a while now, this is the first time that I've had a zero intervention drive. Um, I'm very well convinced here. Now, I want to actually show my wife and see and get what her takes are because she's not a big FSD uh, person. She doesn't use it at all, nor does she use autopilot. So I'd love to see 
what her thoughts are on the this version to see just how good it is. I love how the speed auto adjusts. I think that's a huge one when you're being aware of the people around you. Um, it was overly cautious before, but now it seems to be very, very comfortable in its behavior. So uh, I'm curious to know, what do you think? Have you downloaded and installed FSD? What was your experience like? Um, I know for me, I saw a great experience. Do you think that this could remove the nag? Like, do you think that we're finally at a level where we don't need nag anymore? I think so. Uh, let me know down in the comments down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video. I'll catch you guys next time. I got some more testing to do. Let me know also uh, what other tests you want me to run and check on FSD, uh, this latest version. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.